Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to React Andy Monogatari. Um, this is Otaki Crab Part Two, otherwise known as Episode Two, because it's got crazy names for some reason. Uh, what's going on? What what happened last episode? There's quite a lot. This I feel like the show it's quick with it. Um, it has a very unique like style in the way the characters are talking. I mean, in retrospect, girl snuck in an entire like Full Metal Alchemist reference just smack in the middle of the last episode. I don't know. They're going crazy with it, so. Um, but it was packed. That's basically what I'm trying to say there. Um, what happened? We met our main boy, Adaragi. Um, Adaragi, literally, first thing he does is look at his, uh, presumably crush or whatever, uh, panties of Hanakawa. I think her name's Hanakawa. Um, as the wind lifted up her skirt, right? And he, you know, m memorized that for later. Um, we met Hanakawa, of course. She was pretty chill. Uh, she seemed pretty nice. Adaragi was thinking of cat girls when he was looking at her, so you know, you know he's got some freaky ideas bouncing around that noggin of his. Um I just realized I screwed up my There we go. Um what else? We met her name's like Senjo Gahara, something like that. Um I'm probably gonna need to see it re like written again so I can get the pronunciation right. Uh and she has had her weight stolen or removed by a mythological crab like god thing. Um and Adaragi has uncovered this when she slipped off of the stairs from a banana and fell into his arms. And he was like, wait, she's super light. What's up with that? Uh, so, I don't know. A lot of stuff going on there. They're definitely introducing this, like, myth idea, which I bet, like, these different myths are going to be super common. We know Adaragi used to be a vampire. He's post-undead because um, we saw the... I assume vampire. Um, he said undead, but I assume vampire because we saw the bites, the bite mark in his neck. Um and so seeing that his new friend or whatever you want to call Senjo Gahara uh, also has a mythological issue, uh, our boy Adaragi is bringing her to his boy Oshino, I think his name is, who is like an expert in dealing with this kind of crap. Holy crap. Um, what else? Uh, Oshino has a, this little girl that's like the remnants of a something, like a creature, a monster. A, I feel like it was something undead again. Um, and so there's just a little girl that's just chilling in his room. Uh, cool. Uh, Senjo Gahara was trying to kill, well not kill, was trying to intimidate uh, Araragi into silence using a, a, a vast array of office supplies. Again, cool. Uh, she seems to be someone that's super, I mean she was saying kindness itself is like an aggressive act towards her, so she's obviously super mistrusting. Um, whether this is relative to something to do with the weight or something else, we'll, you know, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, as far as Hanakawa said, she was pretty chill, or Senju Gahara was pretty chill before the crab incident happened. So maybe she's grown super jaded from that incident or uh, has been treated poorly by people that she usually like would uh, find comfort in. I don't know, like she loses her weight and then her parents disown her. I mean, it's just random, right? But something like that could lead to her being super jaded and mistrusting um in the way that she displayed towards Adaragi especially like is there some sort of like shame in being affected by a myth right uh like the crab for example seeing that she was trying to intimidate him specifically into silence you know so I don't know something to play around with there uh, I'm I mean I could see a situation we did get little glimpses of like vampire hunter lo hunting looking guys I mean they had these giant crosses and such maybe being known as an undead or like somebody affected in this kind of way is super dangerous because people will hunt you down for it as you're trying to potentially like remove it from you in the way that Adaragi did previously, you know, with him being post undead. Lots of thoughts, lots of ideas going on. Um, frick, what else? What else? Not too much. Um, I know I'm excited to watch this series, you know, excited. Yeah, let's just get it started. I'm sure I'll remember some stuff as we're going on here. And should be fun. Episode two. It better be episode two. This is episode two, right? I always get no. Don't resume the. Stop! Stop! Stop the video. How do I confirm this is episode two? Yeah, Hitagi Crab Part Two. It's entitled O2. Okay, we are good. Maximize the screen. Full screen mode. Already got the Coal Girls subtitles loaded in. Um, which I mean, I've heard are pretty good. So I think we're just gonna keep going with that, unless everybody starts screaming at me because holy crap. People got some strong opinions on this show. I mean, I respect it. You love the show. You you want people to experience in the best kind of way. That's a good thing. All right, enough of me rambling. Three, two, one. Bang! Uh, I'm not drinking anything, by the way. I know I usually show y'all what I'm drinking.
That's out of Okay. Senjo Gahara. Okay, I was close, I think. Ooh. Okay, a little shower scene. She spanked herself. Mm, okay, so some parental trauma. A little bit with like a divorce. That's a potential. Um, which could have lead to her jadedness that I was talking about. Okay, straight into it. Um, I'm probably gonna run back that, that dialogue just to make sure I really got it in my brain. What's, you know what's funny to me? Adaragi has his hair covering one eye and his other eye is always trying to find something like suspicious to look at, you know? I mean, episode, uh, I feel like there's this, like they had like a spotlight effect on his one like visible eye at some point, which kind of I think reflects that. Um, I mean, even there, you know, she's showering, homie's thinking about it. But the guy's also pretty nice. Like, I, I don't know. I don't have that great of a read on Adaragi yet. Um, he is selfless in the degree that he wants to help Senjo Gahara, despite not really having much of a reason to. I don't know. I mean, does he have a reason to? Or like that we know of. I mean, like, to curry her favor. But for what end, right? He could totally be doing it for something. I don't know. It's an interesting, it's an interesting situation. What's up, giant Senjo Gahara? I kind of like, um, I forgot her name. The other girl. Hanakawa. Hanakawa was chill. Also, the lyrics are pretty good. Though I wasn't paying that much attention, if I'm going to be really honest. The weightlessness. You, you, you've already read it. You know what I'm talking about. I'll get back to it later. Oh my goodness. Where are we? Okay, that's literally right at the end of the OP. We are running that back. You can only help yourself. Oh, that's what he said last episode too. Yeah, okay. I will lend you my powers, is that what you said? All right, let's see. Holy water. Hey. Huh? Mm, what does he get out of it? She's smart. She is smart. If it makes you feel better. Okay, dude. For the class representative? That was a vampire. Hmm. He said class representative. That makes me think Hanakawa, but... I think it's still him, right? Because he's the one that had the, the bite. She's desperate for it, though. I'm not sure which one of them is the class representative, you know? Between the two of them. Yeah, you're gonna walk out straight naked? Oh my goodness. This woman, he's over it. A towel. Oh, this music. The piano, man. How old is she's? I think they're adults. I think somebody said they were like, er. Eh, I don't know. Not important. It kind of is important considering she's straight naked, but you know. I ain't got nothing to say about that. Oh, he has. It wouldn't be my fault. <laughs> Is she even done? Oh my goodness, this woman. She's toying with him, bro. Oh, 
Okay, she's warming up to him at least. This guy. Terrible. <laughs> she calls him a virgin. Guys can't either. <laughs> I mean, you didn't deny it. And he himself said that in his own head that he, uh, first time he had seen a woman naked, right? So, yeah. At least we know that he is. Okay, he's himself said it out loud. Ooh, she caught on. Oh. She's just a good person. <laughs> Foolish. Man, they're really playing up this dress up. Okay, so it was the class, she's the class rep, that's what you're saying. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Interesting. Glad they clarified that. She also said that she's seen a lot of other people for this. Yeah? She feels his gaze. Or something. <laughs> Could it be that you're just an idiot? My guy, calm himself. Hair dryer. Okay. Optimistic thoughts. Hmm. He really scampered to the other side. This guy. Yeah, what are you talking about? Okay. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, how people see the moon. I gotcha. Cultural, uh, I don't know, something. It's relative to the culture you're raised in. <laughs> They're so mean to each other. Are you taking it off again? They're heavy because she's light. Okay, interesting. This is so... Okay, I'm just gonna keep- I'm gonna just keep trying to stay locked in. <laughs> oh. She's good at insulting him. Holy crap. Is that good? Oh. What? How could you do that to my test score? Also, yeah, it was 100, right? Or, I guess. She's... 
getting a kick out of a, a being mean to him, but she's not actually hurting him to eat crab. That's funny. Um, I don't know. I think she's grown on him. Or he's grown on her, I mean. I mm, wonder if she wanted to eat crab and then got attacked by the weight crab because of that. Oh, we're riding a bike together? Nice, 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 nice. Is someone watching us? Hmm. We're in like the uh, slightly spooky part of city. Oh my goodness. I think this guy's got a cross for an earring. He's a problem. Oh, it's Oshino? Oh, we're at the midnight meeting. I see. Wearing pure clothes, of course. Smart. Yeah. What is that supposed to mean? They got some history. Interesting that Hanakawa got caught up in it before. I'm still kind of thinking about that. She's also got this... Um, or um, Sanjokahara has... Shinobu-chan and that Nifomaniac... Knife... Nifo? I don't know how to pronounce that. Maniac cat. True, the crab is a god. You did say that. Sorry, I got completely distracted by the words. I got up, you know. Okay. We're not kicking it out. We're working with it. Hmm. <laughs> If that's true, that's pretty funny. Oh, he's got like spirit vision, okay. Oh, right. He did kind of say it was nowhere and everywhere or something weird. Yeah, let's summon it and then get rid of it. <laughs> this is kind of scary. Hmm. We're getting ritualistic. Drinking it? Okay, yeah. It's... Yeah, just connect to the gods. It's okay. I'm surprised she's worried. I don't know if she's actually worried about being underage or if she's just trying to quip. She does seem to like to quip. Which I respect. Okay, let's relax. Ooh. I really like the way they're doing the shadows here. They're like moving. Scratch marks. We're going to 10. Okay. Nine, just to nine. I wonder if this, there's a significance in the number nine specifically. Question one, what is your name? Naoetsu. Okay. All right, random. Wow, she's okay, so she's allowed to not answer too. Fair. Wonder if we're gonna go to nine questions specifically. Because we're at eight. Here's nine. 
Uf. Sold everything, right? She had mentioned that. And then the divorce happened. Colt, Colt's really... Okay, like, give me the specifics. Or did they take it? Yeah, okay, I guess she brought him, so same kind of deal. Oh. Demand adultery. That's pretty horrible. Yeah, okay. Which is fair. What a shitty mom. Oh. Hmm. So, yeah, it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? She resisted to, like, protect herself, but in doing so, now kind of re almost regrets it because of the damage caused to that relationship. Wow, this is a crazy shot. A little bit of IRL things. Oh, and they're doing that to, like, open the eye. Hello? A crab. Wait, they did just throw showed the definition of a crab. That's hilarious. Oh, this poor girl. Oh, it's kind of scary. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, it's attacking her. I thought the gods were supposed to not be that mean. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Oshino. Okay, this one's impatient. I was about to say, this guy is not acting as advertised. Look at him just chilling. He's just grabbing the crab. He just, did he just, he shoulder throwed the crab. Okay, let's fight the god crab, sure. <laughs> I, I generally hate crabs. True, you gotta like crack it and then dip it. Bounce back, bounce back. Are we not gonna fight it then? Or are you... Okay, yeah, she's- I think she's- she's being nice to the crab. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. I wonder, like, how much the crab is tied to the trauma, right? Like, was she... Like, chosen for the trauma or something? Yeah, I mean... She's tying it together. So, surely, right? I think that was Oshino, like, punctuating it, too, with the stomp there. A flashback. Oh, 
Okay. Oh my, what is happening? Okay, nice. Good. But the mom attributed, yeah, to the cult. She she attributed the success of this procedure to the cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it like a beast. Oh, that's so horrible. Hmm, the destruction of the home. And that's each of the parents, bro. They're going hard with the imagery right now. That's when the crab appeared. Okay. Did it, like, take away the pain kind of thing? Is this, like, a negative coping mechanism as a... Like, it, that's why we had to bring that up. An emotion god? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's my... Boy Oshino right here. Mm. Yeah. Ah, okay. So to fight the crab, she had to like bring her, she got her emotions back. That's what it was. Right, which is very hard. You just have to process the emotion to get your way back. Nostalgic memories of family. Mm -hmm. I think she's good. Yeah. You? Yes! New friendship. Good stuff. Yeah, Adoragi, you just helped this girl out like an immense amount. Because, yeah, she was working as a very like apathetic. It was like an apathy, right? Oh, this is great! Oh, uh, why are you looking at her like that? No, oh, what's up, Senjo Kahara? What is happening? Araragi, you have. <laughs> what, two sisters? Wake up, wake up, wake up! <laughs> yeah, you didn't sleep. You were too busy helping with a. Uh, not quite an exorcism, but keep close. Wait. Wait, what? Did you just gain weight? He was at 100. Wait, how much is... I don't do it in kilograms. Is 55 kilograms a lot? I don't freaking know. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna literally have to check after this episode. That's crazy. After the ED and after we look a little bit. Oh, boy. They're we this is, like, unexpectedly got really dark. I was not expecting that. Honestly, I did listen to this already. Let's just, just do a little Skipsy's action. I'm thinking Senjo Gahara is going to continue to be like an important character. I mean, she's featured in the ED so much. I think we're going to watch these. These are probably good to watch, right? Oh, that's a booty. Oh, hi, Senjo Gahara. Apparently they get like... Yeah, I don't freaking know what's happening. I don't know. Either... I feel like I was told that they eventually stop being previews as much as start being just like new content. Um... Okay. Wow. Yeah, I was not expecting this show to get dark like that, honestly. Um, my mom got most in her cult. The debt. She leaves out the abuse. Or not the abuse, but the... um, The... What do I want to call it? Uh, attempted sexual violence. Freaking attempted rape, whatever. You, I mean, you know. She left that part out in the beginning monologue um, because... I mean, of course she would, right? She's not going to just talk about that, and they wanted to reveal it later into the thing. Um, I did want to look through these flashes, because they did, like, 20 of them back-to-back, -back, and I feel like that's worth checking. You can only save yourself. That's what Ashina said. Ashina always says that. You know that, don't you, little missy? Mm, yeah, and that's why you got to, like, look internally to deal with the trauma. I wonder if, like, all the myths are going to be, like, reflective of trauma, or if it's only, like, specific ones. And not necessarily trauma, but just emotion as a whole. Um... Oshino did say, like, 
an emotion god. It's a western fairy tale. In some place there lived one young man, a good young man. One day he met a wondrous old man in the city. The, the old man asked that young man to sell his shadow. Shadow? Yes, the shadow that comes from your feet when you are lit by the sun. Ten gold coins is what he asked for. That young man sold it without hesitation for ten gold coins. And the young man didn't even think once that his shadow had more wor worth than ten gold coins. Well, wasn't he right? Practically speaking, not having a shadow is hardly a disadvantage. There isn't any constraint. Ashino continued speaking while increasingly gesturing. Okay. Oh, I missed one. Oh, my goodness. Bro, I'm literally going to have to frame by frame this. I wonder if I can, like... Okay, that's sub. So, okay, don't worry about that. Ocean increasingly gesturing. But in the end, it didn't go well. The young man was persecuted by townspeople and family. It was just out of place. It's weird for someone to not have a shadow, they said. Well, that's it. It's just weird. Well, the shadow itself can be weird too, but not to have any shadow is a hundred times more weird. Like something normal is missing. So, young man sold his normality for 10 gold coins. So, yeah, we're, we're kind of uh, tying the shadow to normality, selling the shadow as like a mythos tale that someone even is bothered, like wanting to buy your shadow is reflective of like selling away your normality and like you're fitting into society. I mean, they're doing some stuff here. Silent voice, silent voice, silent voice, silent voice. That young man looked for the mysterious old man in order to return his shadow, but no matter how hard he searched, no matter where he searched, he couldn't find that old man, so it's sad. Togi Crab Part 2. There was one more little bit, though. Let me see if I can catch that. Nisiosin. I don't know what this means. All right. Holy crap. They're going hard. I mean, he was totally right. Oshino was totally right when he said, like, uh, you have to help yourself. Um, at least with this crab specifically. <laughs> All this talk where she's, like, being mean to him. Um, <laughs> what was this? Like, a man's virginity can spread to a woman. You can't, guys can't either. I guess can't spread your virginity to either one. And he's like, wait a second. You think I'm a virgin? I mean, obviously. Um... I wonder why she's flaunting her body that much. I mean, she said that it's a... I mean, if I really want to try to read into it, I mean, she said, like, clothes... Can I get a shot that isn't her, like, posing? Um, there we go. That's just them chilling. That her her clothes were, like, heavy, you know? But when you, like, try to factor in the uh, attempted sexual violence against her from the cult guy, then, like, the way she handles her body is, like, a thing. Um... I don't know, like, it draws more importance to that, more, like, uh, focus on that. So for her to, like, flaunt it as, like, a reward to Adaragi before dealing with the trauma, I mean, it shows, like, a potential. I'm not saying that this is necessarily a problem, like, to do, um, but it shows a potential, like, misunderstanding in, like, the body, uh, in, like, her body specifically. Like, she doesn't know how, like, valuable, in big quotes, it is. So she's, like, giving it to him without, like, really understanding what she's doing, um, just because it's reflective of the trauma she faced when she was younger. Um, and I'm guessing that like post the trauma being like dealt with, which was what we were doing with the crab there, she won't necessarily act like this as much anymore in this kind of like sexualized way. I mean, the way she walks out of the shower completely nude and isn't bothered by it. Um, Cause I mean, think about it, right? The crab taking her weight was like taking her emotions, which were tied to her mother and to the, the violence she faced as a child, right? So, by taking away the her experience of that that is like intimately tied to her sexuality because you know like she was you know uh, sexually attacked by taking that away through the weightlessness of the or the weight thing of the crab i mean it's it's like almost saying that she doesn't she doesn't have like a proper understanding of it in this in this scene which is why she's acting so like brazen with him like sexually that's a an idea there um the way she's being mean like i was saying at the very beginning right like she's kind of a jaded um mean mistrusting i mean i was it's these are elements you see in somebody that whose close emotional ties have been like destroyed or like damaged which happened with her mother um and it, uh, how much did it happen with her father too um we weren't we didn't talk about the father which makes me think that the father was like well no, the father did divorce the mom Maybe, maybe he wasn't, like, aware of what was going on. I don't know. I'm not going to say the father did anything wrong, necessarily, because he did divorce the mom um, after the mom didn't help 
Senjo Gohara um, post cult cult leader thing. Um, he also the nine questions to the nine counting. I mean that was like a that might be a motif they're setting up. This scene was really. I mean, horrible vibes. You immediately get horrible vibes as soon as they say a high-ranking member in the house. Or like this, where he's like, oh, ow, my hair got caught on my headphones. Oshino, I think that's his name. Um, Like, starts pushing it. Like, ah. He claimed that it was a ritual. That's just horrible. It's just so horrible. Um, But she fought back. So, shout out to her, right? Hitting him with a spiked shoe, like, get off me. Here for that, good move. Um, unfortunate, though, that the mom prioritized... I mean, because think about how messed up this is, right? The mom is even part of the cult because she attributes Senju Gohara's um, successful surgery to the cult, right? Because she was, like, praying to the cult, surgery went well, so she, like, felt like the cult was right when really it was just probably coincidence. Um... And then to the point that, like, she joined the cult because the cult helped her daughter. But as soon as the cult hurt her daughter, she still stuck with the cult. Right? I mean, that what a... That's just horrible. But I, I feel like that's, like, decently accurate to, like, how a lot of people get immersed into, like, cult-ish things. Not that I have, like, done any, like, heavy reading on that or anything. Um, yeah. And then the mom was punished for it. And... Felt like she owed the cult or whatever, etc. Yeah, and the heaviness of the emotion. No, ha no matter how heavy they are, referring to the emotions, they are things you must carry with you instead of giving it to the crab. Dude, she made the crab. Now, the question is, did she make the crab or did the crab present itself as like an escape for her? I think the crab presented itself as an escape for her. Um, I mean, vampires exist, right? There's bi the bite of the mark, uh, the bite mark, right? And then Oshino was saying, what was he saying? Um, like it's everywhere all around you or whatever. So I'm guessing that the, the crab just was chilling, doing its thing, like existing. And then homegirl Senjo Gahara, like, um, unknowingly called upon it to make the bad feelings go away that were associated with this, make all the heavy feelings go away, took her weight. And then eventually she, you know, she's come around and she's eventually somewhat ready to deal with it, or at least values having her weight back and like those nostalgic memories with her mother back to the point of being willing to do this ritual right which is a, of course a very negative um ex or like a really painful experience for her um so much so that it immediately like bashes her against a wall they'll also consider oshino gr was able to grab the crab too and like step on it right so it's like, it's an, it is a physical manifestation. It's not just like fully metaphorical. Um, not that I was thinking it was. And he was like ready to fight it, you know? So you can actually fight somebody else's like problem like this. Um, though it didn't seem to be the best course of action seeing that it was a last resort. And then when she was willing to attempt a like incorporation of those negative feelings again, he like backed off. Also interesting, this location they're in during this ending thing was a middle school, second grade classroom. I see it on the wall there. I don't know why they're in an abandoned school. Interesting location, to say the least. I'm not going to read into that very much. Yeah, Senjo Gahara was a fifth grader. Oh, and the surgery happened. This was extra contents. I love these visuals, too. Look at this. Open the mind's eye. A-I-U-E-O. Yeah, I don't freaking know what they're talking about, but it's sick. And like the backpack in the, as the iris um, to correspond with the fifth grader idea. I mean, they're doing so much cool stuff here. Um, just before graduation from middle school. So how old was she probably? How, I don't know the Japanese middle school age, but that's pretty, I mean, that's young. That's probably like what? Um, I'm literally trying to like map back to like when I was in middle school. What, like, eighth eighth grade is when I left middle school, right? I had six, seven, eight for, like, my schooling. And I'm in... Okay, so, like, what, should be, like, 13 or something? Unlucky. I, I, unlucky doesn't even feel like the right thing to say. Like, it's, it's, like, this is, like, a bad enough thing that me just saying, like, unlucky and brushing it off kind of sucks. Yeah, perverted sexual desire, beast, all these things with the hands, the mother just praying over it. That's so dark. That's so incredibly dark. And the emphasis on the hand, right? Because that's the way that he like, um, 
he reached out at her, right? And, you know, was attempting that. So there's the emphasis on the hands. Um, so much, a lot of really good imagery there. A weight crab. Dang, what are they going to do with this story? This is a great introduction into, like, what we're doing with the world, right? Like, kind of how it works. Because, like, it's punctual being so sad and, like, horrible. Um, but at the same time, like, it, I don't know, it tells us a lot. Do these tw sisters have eggs for hairpins? Look at these. They're actual fried omelets. And <laughs> they're just beating him in bed. Bro, let him sleep. <laughs> Man's just chilling. Oh, yeah, what happened with this weight? Good thing. I was about to end the episode. My weight is 55 kilograms. But he was up to 100 kilograms. All right, I'm going to check how much that is. So 55 to 100. Got to do a little conversion action. So maybe like the weight went from her onto him. Oh, wait, no, but she gained weight. So why would he gain weight? I don't know. The gods did something to his weight. Maybe he like took in her, like empathized with her, over empathized, over empathized and like took in her problems, which then corresponded to him gaining weight because he gained her emotional weight through sympathy. Bro, that's an idea. Bro, this is episode two and we like, there's already like, a, a, a decently long little post discussion. That's crazy to me. Sorry, my Google's taking forever to load, by the way. I might just go look it up on my phone. I'm literally going to. They're taking too long. Let's see. Uh, kilograms to pounds. And we're doing 55. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. So he was 121 pounds, and then now he's 220. Oh, my goodness. Actually doubled to the, the big 220. Okay, yeah, so Google still didn't load. That's cool. Yeah, okay, this is the next problem we got to deal with, whatever is up with his weight. Um, no idea what was going on with the, the post credit scene. I don't know, I'm still kind of torn. It's called, what, Mayori Snail? What did he talk to a snail? Did he get snailed when he was asleep? Snail, um, what does that have to do with? A snail has to do with, like, low movement, low energy. He was, like, chilling in bed, didn't want to get out of bed. He was tired. You know, maybe he got hit by like a lethargy, you know? Mm, that's a little uh, little prediction there. Liking it so far though, interesting. I was not expecting them to like go so like heavy already, but hey, I mean, you never really know with these kinds of shows, right? Um, but that'll probably do it for this episode. On to the next episode three of Bake Monogatari. Um, hope you liked the video. Uh, I forgot how the outro goes. I always forget how the outro goes. Basically, if you're new, subscribe. If you're not new, also subscribe if you want to hit the like button i really do appreciate it. you made it to the end of the episode not that many people do that so i really appreciate that you did but until then until next time that's all i got for this episode peace